Socialist ideas began to gradually spread, challenging capitalism. One very impactful socialist ideas that spread was Karl Marx's communist views. Although Marx was German, he would spend most of his life in England, where he witnessed the harsh and brutal conditions of Britain's Industrial Revolution. In response, he wrote the Communist Manifesto. This pamphlet had ideas about a new type of government called communism and how it would work. However, because the manifesto was originally created for the industrial economies of England, France, and Germany, no one had ever thought that this revolutionary idea would be the cause of the Russian and Bolshevik revolutions. The Bolshevik and Russian revolutions dramatically impacted Russia. The conflict between the Bolshevik party and the provisional government and the red-white armies led to a compromise that included a re-evaluation of communist ideals to suit the people's needs. On January 22, 1905, industrials workers in St. Petersburg went on strike intending to protest their requests to Emperor Nicholas II. But Nicholas II was not present in the city, so Grand Duke Vladimir, his uncle, ordered the policemen to open fire on the crowd in order to stop them from any further actions. After the massacre, soon known to be as Bloody Sunday, numerous riots commenced across the Russian Empire shortly leading to the Russian Revolution of 1905. After several months of chaos, the Russian government tried to end the revolution by announcing the October Manifesto where Nicholas made major concessions. This was to make a compromise with the common people and establish the Duma, the new Russian parliament. Although the Duma was a good compromise with the people, it did not have enough power to balance out the monarchy of Nicholas II. This led to Nicholas II undermining the Duma, which led to further protests. In World War I, Nicholas took charge of the Imperial Russian Army. Soon later, the army was quickly defeated and Nicholas was liable for all the defeats in the war. This led to protests that Nicholas hoped that he could stop with his army, but the army eventually betrayed him and joined the protesters. Now Nicholas was defenseless without an army by his side, was forced to abdicate his crown in 1917. Since there was no monarchy ruling the throne, former Duma members formed the Provisional Government who officially ran Russia. During the ruling of the Provisional Government, a man named Vladimir Lenin was able to come back to Russia from exile due to Nicholas's abdication. He really cared about the Russian people. His idea of the revolution was to help people. His idea of the Russian revolution was to get rid of the czars and the nobles that had kept people down. In that sense, I think he was a respectable person that really cared about Russia. I don't think he was in it for himself. And the way you know that is right up at the end when he was the head of the whole country, he lived in, uh, in one room and he had two suits of clothes and he wanted nothing for himself. Lenin then formed a group rivaling the provisional government, the Soviet or Bolsheviks, which included workers and soldiers. With Lenin's influential powers, Lenin promised the people food, land, and an end to the war if they overthrew the provisional government. Fortunately for Lenin, the provisional government continued the conflict by staying in the war, leading to conflicts with the people, which would ultimately benefit the Bolshevik cause. On October 25, 1917, the Bolsheviks made the quick action to seize Petrograd and finally overthrow the provisional government. The Bolshevik party had decided that the provisional government was not capable of leading Russia and would transfer the leadership of Russia forcefully to them. The Bolsheviks took over the Winter Palace, the seat of the provisional government, and forced the Prime Minister Kerensky to flee. Almost immediately, Lenin would end the war and compromise an economic policy called War Communism. This would get rid of private land ownership, which would let the peasants divide up the land and to set up factories where people got the same wages. Russia would have become a natural economy, but it unintentionally created a big conflict as food became scarce, leading to the Russian famine of 1921. The shortage in food led to the fall of war communism. In the months that followed, the Bolsheviks formed the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic and signed the Treaty of Breathless Hofs, withdrawing the Russians out of the war. This treaty gave large amounts of land to Germany, which negatively affected the Russians' economy. During this time of peace, the Bolsheviks stole large amounts of enemies such as Sars, Monarchs, Sex Legion, and the political parties who opposed the Bolsheviks, collectively called the Whites. Foreign forces from America, France, and Britain also supported the Whites. Their enemies were the Reds, or the Bolsheviks and their supporters, mainly led by Trotsky and Lenin with 60 million people to fight for their cause. The Russian Civil War officially started due to Lenin closing the Assembly of 1917 and the ratifying of the Treaty Brest-Litov. The Whites were initially very successful at the beginning of the war. However, shortly after Nicholas II's assassination, the Reds were able to fend off many of the Whites' attacks for three years due to geographical advantages and White soldiers losing the will to fight. The White Army was finally disbanded in 1922 and the Russian Civil War officially ended. 
Along with the Civil War, Lenin had compromised a new economic policy to replace the previous failure of war communism in 1921. The new economic policy returned most agriculture, retail trade, and small-scale industry to private land ownership. This new economic policy changes the communist ideals by implementing capitalist elements to stabilize the economy. Furthermore, it let the states retain control of large industry, transport, foreign trade, and banking and was able to save Russia and the Bolshevik Party from a total breakdown. In 1922, Lenin formed the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. With the Soviet Union made, Lenin is almost killed in an assassination attempt. He survives, but shortly after, suffers from many strokes, leaving him helpless and crippled. In January 1924, Lenin's life had ceased. Three years later, Stalin defeats and exiles his political rival Trotsky and becomes the new leader of the Soviets. With Lenin's death, the new economic policy never became fully implemented as Stalin. The new leader of the Bolsheviks completely abolished the new economic policy. Stalin then created his own compromise, which is known as Stalin's five-year plan. In this plan, Stalin would compromise on the makings of a huge industry and agriculture at the drastic cost of consumer goods. Furthermore, because of the five-year plan, peasants lost their land to the state, which outraged them, which would eventually lead to even more conflict. The Russian Revolution was very important because it ended the Russian Tsardom, one of the few remaining monarchies at the time. Then during the Bolshevik Revolution, they had a system of vanguardism where Lenin and his trusted partners would lead the Bolsheviks by being powerful leaders of the revolution instead of sticking to Marxist communist ideals of equality. This showed Marxist communist ideals were flawed and had to be changed for the Bolsheviks to become victorious in the revolution. The victory of the Bolshevik Revolution then ended the provisional government in Russia, turning it into a first communist country at the time. However, this communist government would be short-lived due to the hardship that war communism Lenin had implemented, changing the philosophy of communism to resolve the economic conflict. His change was the new economic policy which changed the fully communist country to have somewhat capitalist ideals. What the new economic policy did was to bring back some capitalism, uh, some free markets, some private property, you know, and the Bolsheviks had come to power against all that. But they had to bring it back in 1921 with the new economic policy in order to repair the, the damage that war and revolution had caused. Uh, they needed to get the country back on its feet. And one of the things that Lenin thought was that nothing does a better job than that, building, repairing, growing. Nothing does a better job of that than capitalism. That's what capitalism's really good at. So he, yeah, he brings back some capitalism in order to get the economy back on its feet. But as you know, a few years later, Stalin destroyed that and went back to communism. This shows that a government cannot solely rely on the communism Karl Marx envisioned, but changed his philosophy to suit the people's needs. Although the Bolshevik Revolution was initially successful in leading to a Bolshevik government, it failed to fully implement communism because of the new economic policy, compromise, which allowed the Soviet Union to be formed. The Soviet Union then allowed Russia to become a more modernized and advanced superpower. In conclusion, the Bolshevik Revolution dramatically impacted Russia in many ways. The conflict between the Bolshevik and the Russian monarchy along with the red-white armies led to a compromise. The compromise would be a newly created country based on communist ideology in Russia, changed to suit the people's needs. The original idea of communism is that it's supposed to be about everybody being equal. That changed along the way. It changed because the Russians figured out that to make the country work, you had to, have, you had to pay some people more than others. And that led to inequality instead of the equality that they originally wanted. So in that sense, the equality thing kind of by the boards and you ended up with an unequal society just because that's what you had to do to run a modern state. Russia, a very poor country at the time, surprised the world greatly from their change to communism and would change the course of history. It still affects us today greatly because of how it formed a new government that would be still be in use today. Communist countries today have verifying degrees of communism, showing the compromise of communist ideals to adhere to the people and how much the philosophy of communism was twisted from what Karl Marx said it to be. This revolution that took place showed us how much bloodshed took place to set a compromise in communist ideals that still affects us today, for the better or the worse.